The Doppler effect has an intimidating equation. I mean, look at this thing. It's a mess. In this video, we're going to walk through the Doppler effect conceptually so that you don't have to use equations like this on your MCAT test day. Let's get started. The Doppler effect, or Doppler shift, is a phenomena of waves and can be applied to both sound and light waves, although we'll usually see it with sound on the MCAT. The general idea is that the apparent frequency, or how close the waveforms are together, will appear to be different than the actual frequency depending on if the source of the sound is moving away from or towards the receiver of the sound. This makes more sense with a real life application. Say you're walking down the street and you're heading east. You hear an ambulance coming up the street behind you, wailing its siren. It's also heading east, but it's gaining on you. What do you think the apparent frequency of that siren will be according to you, the receiver? If you guess that it would be higher, you're correct. As the source of the sound moves closer to the receiver of the sound, the apparent frequency increases, aka it feels like the waveforms are getting shorter or the pitch is getting higher, even though in actuality, the frequency hasn't changed. Okay, so you're still walking down the street and the ambulance has whipped on right past you. You're both heading east, but now the ambulance is in front of you and moving further and further away. It's still blaring its siren, but now the apparent frequency, according to you, the receiver, is going to be less than the actual frequency because the source of the sound is moving away from you instead of towards. Now, in both of these examples, I want you to notice the key feature. The ambulance is either moving towards you or away from you. In other words, there's a relative change in either direction or speed in order for Doppler effect to occur. If you're moving at the exact same speed as the ambulance in the same direction, you're running right alongside of it, you are not going to experience any change in frequency. The apparent frequency will be equal to the actual frequency and there will be no Doppler effect, otherwise known as no Doppler shift. Let's go ahead and do another example with trains to make sure we have this concept down. Okay, try this question on your own first and then we'll come back and review it together. Okay, so two trains are traveling alongside each other on parallel tracks moving south at 85 miles per hour. One train is emitting a 750 hertz whistle. What is the most likely change in frequency detected by a receiver on the other train? Let's go ahead and sketch this out. Sometimes it's easier to visualize it than it is to do it in our heads. So we have two trains. We're gonna point them both south, right? Here's my train one. We're looking at it from the top. And here's my train two. Not an artist. All right. And both of these trains are moving 85 miles per hour. 85 miles per hour. And train one is emitting a sound that train two is receiving. So train one is our source, train two is our receiver. However, for Doppler effect to occur, we need to have either a change in speed between the source and the receiver or a change in direction. In this case, they are both moving south and they're both going the same speed. They're traveling along parallel tracks right next to each other. So guess what? The 750 hertz that the train one is emitting is going to sound like 750 hertz by the receiver in train two. In other words, there's no change in frequency detected by the receiver compared to the source. So our answer here is zero because of the word change in frequency. If they had just asked what is the most likely frequency detected by train two, of course, B would be our answer. The Doppler effect is really important for several real life medical applications, and those are most likely to be tested on the MCAT. Before we get into that, my name is Amanda Brem. I've been coaching students on their MCAT journey since 2019. Please remember to subscribe to this channel to get more videos on MCAT content, test taking strategies, and mental fitness tips to help you perform your best on testing. And if you'd like to see more lessons like this, including interactive strategy work and personalized meetings and study schedules, please check out my next available MCAT cohort in the caption below. In addition to the practice question we just did, you might see some more conceptual questions on the MCAT about the Doppler effect and how it's applied in medical settings. Let's review those so you can get those points on test day. First up, you may be tested directly on the variables relevant for the Doppler effect. The two major variables we care about are speed, speed of sound or light, and frequency of that sound or light. In most cases on the Doppler effect, the wavelength is held constant and what's changing is the speeds or frequencies. 
One major application of the Doppler effect in medical settings is the use of ultrasounds. Ultrasounds work by using the Doppler effect to measure relative blood flow, and by doing so can visualize things like clots or valve issues in the heart. The way this works is that sound waves are produced by an ultrasound probe and bounce off of red blood cells moving through blood vessels. If those blood cells are moving towards the probe, the apparent frequency shift will be higher, right? Just like if the source and the receiver are moving towards each other in our examples. If the blood cells are moving away from the probe, the apparent frequency that comes back to the probe will appear to be lower. The machine can then graph this visually or through different colors like light and dark or even red and blue to visualize what's going on in our blood vessels and our heart. Lastly, remember that Doppler effect can apply to light as well as sound. So when the apparent frequency is higher in a Doppler effect that involves light, we call this a blue shift because blue light has a higher frequency. When the Doppler effect shows the apparent frequency decreased compared to actual, we call that a red shift because red light has lower frequency. And as always, remember, Doppler effect or Doppler shift only happens when the source and the receiver are either moving towards or away from each other. And that's the Doppler effect in a nutshell. If this video is helpful for you, please share it with your pre-med community. As we know, the MCAT can be challenging and we all need a little help. Thanks so much and happy studying.